We're here live at the Young Innovators Fair here at the Games for Ed booth. We're here talking all about Games for Ed. What is Games for Ed, Mitch? Well, Games for Ed is a not-for-profit. We started uh, just over, or just under a year ago uh, at FETC last, last year. Our purpose is to increase the use of games in schools. Um, our belief is that games really embody what we want education to be in the 21st century. In the last year, there's been a growing understanding of the power of games. We had to prove that games work. But the interesting thing is 85% of all teachers and administrators for that matter already believe that games do really at least two things for students. They increase time on task and for, th and for things like math, mathematics, science, English language arts, very often the more time you spend on something the better, the better you get at it. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing that games do is they teach complex topics. Uh, and they do it in a way that is very different from pedagogy. They do it in, because students have to, uh, have to accomplish things in games, and they're very often involve uh, reasoning, problem solving, creativity, collaboration, and they're so mo motivated to do it that they keep on coming back and, and doing it over and over again until they really have it. There's a difference between gaming and gamification, right? Right. There's actually, it's funny you say that because there's three terms. There's game, or playing games, or game-based learning. Uh, there's gamifying, and there's gamification. And they're different. And they're different. Gamification is really taking some of, some of the things that games do and applying it to other things. There's scorekeeping in games, there's rewards in games, and if you take out and just pull those two things out and then apply them to quizzes, so you could get a competitive leaderboard for kids who are taking quizzes. That's gamification. Kids talk about that. That's not what really motivates them to play the games. What motivates them is the mechanics of the game. They get, they get excited about trying to accomplish something. Now, that's the heart of game-based learning. And gamifying is taking something that you do and trying to make a game out of it. So you could take whatever you do in your classroom and you, and you can make your classroom lessons into a game. The fact of the matter is today, if you're a teacher, it takes more effort to use games in your class than to teach in the traditional manner. What we have to do is we have to find a way to make games easier to deploy in the classroom. And that's really where get one of the things that Games for Ed is trying to do, and work with, with game developers to kind of exert some influence on them to tailor their games more to the way teachers and administrators want games to integrate into education. Do you have to defend these tech the, 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 these techniques? I mean, what what is it about this thing right now to get it more mainstream? How do we say, look, I want to play Minecraft, and that's okay? We've known that games were effective for 100 years. The human brain was designed to learn through play. And so we shouldn't have to justify it, we should just know it. Tell us a little bit about what we're doing here at the Games for Ed booth. I'm looking around and I'm seeing hundreds of kids so far have lined yeah, up, right. all to, I'm gonna say, to help each other, right? I, I see them working on Minecraft, but I do like it when and one other kid, games. And, and other, other games, too. The, the PBS kids, there are a ton of kids playing PBS kids games. There are kids playing the Game Desk games. Uh, there are kids playing Zumbinis. People said, well, you know, I'll just sit the kid in front of a TV and the video and, and, and let the kid go. People think that that's what happens in games. But when the parents become interested in the games that the students are playing, then it's a win for both of them. What does a parent need to know when their kid says, I want to play a game like Minecraft? You don't need the most up-to-date equipment to run most of the games. If you've got kids, no matter what they're doing, you should be involved in it. And you know, you should be there with the kids. If your kids are on the internet, you have to have a firewall, and you really need to be monitoring what, what they're doing. We have a website, www.gamesfored.org. Um, and on our website, we also have resources uh, that ex that uh, explain uh, how games teach kids. There's ways to reach out, out for us on our website. We'd love it if people could donate to us so that we can do more events like this. If you're thinking of getting involved in staging a game jam or introducing games into your school, uh, we'd love to help out. On Thursday nights at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, we have a Twitter chat with the hashtag games for ed You know, you put in, I'm thinking of using games in my classroom, what should I do? 
and the people who are on the chat, they're going to respond to you and they're going to start giving you some, su su some suggestions. This has been great. Thanks so much for having us out. We will be back more from the Young Innovators Fair. This is TeacherCast at the Games for Ed booth.